Good morning, folks. The Earthquake Condition Index finally hit an even score of B last night. This morning, Fiji took the largest tremor since the last major uptick we had a few weeks ago. Let's go to the buoys. One of the new floaters in the Bay of Bengal is showing minor deviations this morning, but nothing major. The same can't be said for the anomalous readings north of Puerto Rico. Clearly, it's some sort of data error because the coastlines might have noticed a 150-foot wave in the area. But we do often see those seafloor anomalies, or jolts, preceding larger tremors. And just a note while we're over here. For those new to the channel, you may be aware of the East Coast tsunami threat from the Canary Islands off West Africa, but we have evidence of historic landslides on the north side of Puerto Rico as well. This area is rumbling all the time and a trigger here would shoot a massive tsunami up the coastline much faster than if it had to traverse the entire Atlantic Ocean. South America. Two lows of note. The east drawing a convergence back to Brazil while the south readies to do the same in about two days. You see a system off both sides of Australia. Both lows are rainmakers but not in any real hurry to go anywhere. Once more, we see defined North Atlantic lows in a hodgepodge over the central continent. Purple shows the lows and they're cresting from the west and shifting north out of the Mediterranean. The clouds show the spin to the lows very well, along with the storm zones. We see a small convergence in the U.S. that will not play much tonight. The real story is the low spinning in the Pacific at the U.S.-Canada border. She's twisting that moisture up onto the land and it's raining on that line all the way east. Experts expected a CME impact last night around 450 kilometers per second and at around 30 protons per cubic centimeter. I thought both guesses were overkill, but it turns out they got the density correct. The speed, however, was indeed much weaker than the experts predicted, with a ceiling of only 400 kilometers per second ahead of the speedier Corona hole stream set to hit tonight or tomorrow. With the minor shock we did take, we are seeing some geomagnetic instability, sensitive meters on the floor with their hands covering their ears. That's the effect of the shockwave. The solar flaring remains incredibly low. The sunspots aren't to blame. Must be the coming grand minimum. Earth's magnetic connection to the sun is very close to the departing group, so that large delta forming at the lead is definitely worth a look, even though it's turning away from Earth. The incoming sunspots are much smaller, but they do have potential. The largest, out front, has been a story of growth and development, perhaps more to come with heliocentric geometries afoot the next week. Right now, we have coronal openings north and south coming in. They both have significant power and will further ramp up the earthquake conditions soon. Geocentric geometry in play the next week as well. Coronal holes dark and incoming in 211 angstroms. Perhaps you'll also notice a pop center disc at the end, a small filament destabilizing and is lifting off the surface, mostly to the south of Earth's orbit. Current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.